in, mm. the pace change is going to be so key in terms of who wins out. Okay. Let's find out. We dive right on in. On the attacking side, it will be loud. Defensive side will be optic. Map three here. Couldn't ask for a better way for this game to go. The double, double stack, stack towards the cubby. One's going to dip and one's going to stay, but they note marved. Dealt with very quickly as well. Aspas just swings onto it, finds the headshot. Now to actually build on the back of this now. Actually, the double reveal and Sadak punishes a second. Ye will fall. Looking real good on this so far. And a note one from Connector as well, but actually Crash is going to try and get a little ahead of that. Caution now has to be shown. Surely, flanked handle. Wow. Loud look good. Four standing. Bold B just run down, basically. Uh, and the double stack, interesting as well. It's, it's noted immediately. Typically, this knife is invested close onto the pillar just to make sure that a chamber can't sit in a spot like that and TP away. Mm -hmm. So interesting to see the decision making here on the pistol round to even invest behind that. I'll come out on top though. Three Bulldogs and the Vandal thrown in here for round two. Are they scrapping up on B long as well? I think they are. Trying it again. Back into Cubby boys. <laughs> Tuck a third in. Why not? They they kind of have. They're actually just committing for long. This is quite interesting. Now, yeah, he's going to dip away, but it's smart to stick around. Do you at least get one down? Sadak removed and FNS. Well, he can't get out of danger. He doesn't have that get out of jail free card. He has to walk the way back, but they've done a fair bit of damage, and yeah, he's still standing. FNS is going to find one. Three four though. Huge. A lot of damage. Wow. Down. That's ridiculous. That was like a classic. Fair enough. I expect Loud to maybe just offset this with a couple of pistols. Obviously bringing the Vandal back in. And that Bulldog as well. Interesting stat. Actually, yeah, 67% of the time after splitting, Optic come out on top with the 2-1. But again, Pearl here, <laughs> uh, there's no data here. You can't really lean on that stat too much for this series in particular. I'm looking to slow the pace down a little bit now. Poison's off. Initial swing out. An interesting placement here for the orb, just hmm. at the top of B long. Loud stack behind the wall for the time being. Again, interesting placement for the wall as well. Just cuts off a little bit of decay and loud's placement of the poison orb almost negates that. There's no here safe opportunity to capitalize on that delay. A couple of decoy smokes coming through, but Yay will be spotted here. It's half to find one from the back lines. But it's, it's quite interesting to see Optic fighting so much for long control that they've burnt a fair amount of lounge utility. I quite like this approach, kind of making them invest, just clearing the pillar, just clearing towards Cubby. And it does bode well to try and hold on to the site. Removes a little bit of that comfort away, and this is perfect. What a shutdown so far. Optic! Clean work there in response onto the buy here for themselves. Forcing Loud to explore elsewhere on the map now. Lots of focus put towards B on both sides of the coin. See how loud actually approaches the first buy round. This is with Gabe being spotted pretty early, so Marv doesn't one find that kill. It's really a lot of pressure coming through. I face one. I kill Thank God they're the only one to find a kill. Right there. And we see just that loud stacked Don't up worry. elsewhere now. I'll keep them quiet. He's looking towards. Oh, here, maybe you're gonna try and identify victim's position, but also she avoids it. Aspas revealed, still swings onto it. Oh, sorry, actually, we're coming on the backside. This sassy was there to back him up, but Aspas lucky to get away with his life. So a totally different look so far. This much mid presence is something they hadn't seen yet. We've seen a couple of challenges in towards double doors. Want over towards the top doesn't quite reveal as much as they'd like. So again, still testing the waters on either side. But as you can note, Optic happy to take a fight on this. They're not particularly giving up mid control or at least any of the avenues from it. So play a tuck towards pit, kind of on the back side of sight. You're going to have the commitment coming in from Crashy, sitting a little bit deeper towards the A side of things. So this could open up chance towards B. But again, they're not getting any gateway there. into this. Well, this is key though. Nothing marked on the knife here. And Loud want to try and slip in behind that as Victor looks back towards main. Luckily though, Crash is here to pick up the slack. 
now. The horns could probably go up there, but it's going to be FNS to find Sassy. And yeah, there's the information. Lovely play by Crash. He's under all that pressure, still keeping composed and finding the information. Unhand Flash could have been better timed. This is lovely from Optic. Just taking space when they need it. This is really well rounded. Very enjoyable to watch. As Aspas, the last one alive, they've really kept composure throughout this map. Beautiful mid round. The checklist just being one by one achieved by Optic. And actually, Aspas is going to be marked here. Yay, the one to seal the deal. The prime wow. gaming flawless here in round four. Beautifully done. Like I said, just going through the motions. Loud barely achieved anything off this early default other than dealing with the trap. Like sure. I said, it's actually a key position here from Crash. He's in that connector spot just to make sure nobody slips through, right? Remaining. Actually, even after showing presence, that was so fearful to push towards that side of the map. I'm, I, I'm so happy we get to see a new map being worked out. Like, and, and really getting into glimpses of teams and how they're approaching this. It looks like back to business towards B as well. Still happy to commit towards long with Ye. Force them to invest early knives, early prowlers potentially. That gets denied this time. So yeah, he gets to stick around a little longer if he fancies. He does have him off by his side, but we're seeing what looks like a B crunch at least. Maybe a 3-2 split, depending on timing of commitment. But it's Marv to find Sadak. It's already removing some of that attention that was going to be drawn towards yeah. B long. Grassy's actually repositioning here, giving Grassy. Loud a little bit of space and playing off that perfectly. With Marv playing Spike so deep on B side, B. he's there to pick up the slack in Link, making sure Connector doesn't get abused here. Victor going to spot Aspas' headhunter. Swing on to it, deals with it. I've got to say, for me as well, Crashies is everywhere at once at the moment. Like, his play towards yeah, kind really of like is, yeah. uh, keeping the composure towards, I guess, coming off of art, kind of splitting in towards sight, slipping back a little bit deeper, still finding presence there. Like, he's been doing really well to not really give up much of mid because, again, loud initially, like they were kind of testing towards B longer a great deal of the time, so they're going to put a lot of attention towards it. But adjustment towards mid, he's never overstepped, he's not feeding, he's just keeping really composed here. That's the thing, Crashies is the one to kind of make sure this trap isn't dealt with, no pressure comes through towards connector. But if there's no pressure on long, with Ye tucked up, Marv can literally play Link. There's yeah. no risk coming towards yeah. B side, so whether or not Loud will, will try and leave somebody to play a little later in the round on the back of this mid presence, mm. so somebody has to draw the attention. So the minute they're not having any any success towards R, nothing towards double doors, towards connected, towards Link, uh, Optic just have complementary positions right now. It's, it's quite impressive to watch, and, and of course we are in the timeout here for Loud to potentially try and get something going for themselves because it's been Pretty solid response from Optic. Now, alt-wise though, you've got to say it, Marv sitting on his, Ye's got his, Victor has his, FNS two away, Crashy's two away. They're really starting to hit that stride, both in the economy, sitting beside them money-wise, already on but 8K. I, I mean, they, they've had the perfect reply here, Mike. I mean, this is a scary setup when we're coming into round six. <laughs> and yes, on the other side of things, like Aspas, Sadak, and Les all one away from their ults, but these are ready off the rip. I would have to find a couple of kills to get these online, but come back into the buy round. Sassy down on the light shield. No other gaps here. Can see across the scoreboard. We'll see if there's a switch up coming out of this timeout. There's a little bit of focus back towards mid. This time around, actually, the double stack towards yeah. a main. I like this. Do an FNS want to get a little aggressive? And even if they just take up towards kind of the box, they don't have to go much further than this. That's still so much space so they can kind of pull back away from it. The timing's pretty Bring good. This Prowler should be a little bit of a worry for Crashies. That's been thrown down from early enough by. Look at he Mark, does have support though, yeah. It's perfect. This is really nice synergy to hold this side of the map to make sure it's not comfortable at all. That's a little bit of a switch up here in terms of the trap placement. So it's going to be committed towards this hold on Link. That's it. They're going to let the null come out of it, whether or not they actually force their way into mid and try and challenge here, but it's going to slow the round down massively. Loud again have achieved nothing off this early default. The counter utility from Optic so far has been highly impressive, even just the positioning, the conditioning they've been going through, just really keeping their poise here in this. And they're re-exploring late towards a main. Oh, this is, uh, this is heartbreak for Pancada, surely. Actually, no, comes out the better on it. Does eventually fall to FNS, but that's the art online, so if he wants to really secure this site, he can. Now, does he hear the steps, though? I might have noted them. It does go down quickly. Left. Didn't get to wait in towards the corner fast enough there. Maybe just misreading it a little bit. Thought the emphasis was going to be towards R, but actually, Crashy's going to catch Aspas on, on the cross here. The reveal goes up. 
is not comfortable. Not a comfortable plant whatsoever. Yeah, they've got so many problems. 13 seconds, this is not clean. Sassy gonna isolate Marv. That gives him a little bit of freedom to maybe get the plant. Yay! Somehow gets his feet on the ground and gets the kill. Sassy is given no time, no moments, no breath at all. Crashies. Wow, again, I have to give credit in my mind. It gets Crashies here. This guy is just so composed, so critical to outcome, keeping it pit safe, kind of playing off the back of it, making that plant feel impossible. And the crazy thing is, two ults used, there's three available for Optic. Yes, yeah. now coming with four here, but again, the, only, the only one you think about the is the Tour remaining. de Force. This collapse Did I get on the side was beautiful oh, to watch. Oh. Again, it's all just complementary angles from Optic. First. I think actually, that'll be to address play. it. it let's if play. FNS and Victor feel as if they've got a little freedom <laughs> towards main. Well, can't let him run away with that, and Pancada, hmm. right as I'm thinking it, does just that. Crash is looking to maybe get this kill back. He can sit here if he wants to in the rattiest spot in the world, be played in off the back of probably a little bit of contact on towards FNS. He falls away, tries to play in Crashies. Let's see if they go for this. Another different look as well or from Optic on the defense. Look how, look how deep Marv seated towards a site as well. Oh, he's doing walkabouts. The timing's good. Yeah, Marv just sitting at the back. I mean, Crash he should have heard a step there as well. Surely? I'd if he can get behind them, the nightfall will be huge. Les is the just checking it now. Did Les see this? Oh, it doesn't matter, Crash. He's quick to it. And the position's just where he can fall away. He can try and get towards that middle side, maybe use the Nightfall from there if he wants to, try and just support right back around. Because FNS, he's buying time. This is perfect work from him. There's Nightfall coming across. And there's the response. That's so much information off the back of it too. Marv, a dangerous position, but he's going to be just kept safe by time. Time alone is a problem now. The crossfires are just perfectly in place. They can probably clear one, maybe not. Marv still stands. This is unbelievable. There is no entry here. You gotta back away 10 seconds. There is no way in. Should just be a matter of time now. Marv gonna find another one. Pankada falls. Aspas will respond, but the clock gonna decide this one. What a hold once again from Optic. I mean, you look at this here with 30 odd seconds left. The poison orb goes up. There's a snake bite behind it. Marv's got a star in place. Wow. It's so brutal for Loud to just try and force their way onto site. Again, the counter Nightfall, like I said, even if Crashies doesn't get behind him, he plays it in from Art and gets exactly the same information. This is after Loud get a, a freebie in terms of the first blood as well. Uh, and I, I genuinely thought Marv was dead here. Again, the support system around him was great, though. This is really nice to watch the synergy starting to show for optic and loud i mean it's it's been pretty rough so far that was probably getting the first pick there was probably the best start they'd had in a moment's time let's see what they go for now a little bit of a pace change aspas wants to address middle quickly look towards art see if he can maybe get a little bit of control but we noted a couple of rounds here that optic kind of switch it up every now and then sitting deep on occasion life gets denied look how deep loud have to go exploring to try and find contact as well here Big stacked up by Aspas. She gets a better room here. That'd be the green light towards A, but. Do they backfill? Interesting here, because Ye and Crashes have come so early and Loud haven't committed just yet. Bring them down. Look at the minimap now, there's a huge gap. Oh, no man's land, Aspas. Oh. At the angle that Crashes on the web. There's a pop of the ult as well, should really complement this, but. He's still off to the left, two on towards the back. They're still on the right place for this yeah, hit to be coming in. Smoke. Let's see what he can do with this one. FNS still on the side, though. That's, That's going to be Yay. That's ending. one, two, and the third for Yay. Oh, they line up for him. Oh, but they just about get out of there. I mean, the numbers favoring loud substantially, and thankfully, they keep them standing. And again, just another half second here. If Optic are able to sit a little deeper on a site, allowing Yay to actually pull presence back towards Connector, back towards Art, sorry. That could have been lethal. 5-3, we find ourselves now. Optic are doing a really good job, though. Just creating pressure in terms of how loud have to be. Beautiful, just lines three up. They're not even sure who fell on site there, but you get no chance for them to actually run the clock down anymore there. Loud once more. 
was going to say, were drifting towards art, but it looks as if they want to set their sights on connector now. Trying to isolate Ye, who is the solo player on B site here. No rotation coming through just yet either, so could be a little concerning here, but louder a cautious in approach. Again, Mod can swing through CT if he wants to. So a lot of pressure on now, crashes. Yeah. yeah, okay, so he's going to kind of fill the void. They're going to force them back to somewhat of a default, so this is quite good. Loud maybe trying to condition this a little bit, forcing them to less of that stack towards A if they do want to explore towards it, but it takes so much commitment to get them to do this. There's still so much more to take through. Sassy testing the waters constantly, just trying to spam in towards Art. It's not really get the connection he wants. But, but look at that. 30 seconds, where'd you go? Yeah, they, they haven't really got progress towards either site, and no real notable damage or information on what the setup left. is here for Optic. And they're drifting towards the triple stack once again. It's just gonna be a pop flash and go. And, and considering the positioning, it's not been a problem. Victor just gets out swung on. So we're gonna find Zalak, but the trade comes in for Sassi. Rashi's gonna try and isolate one of the back lines, but it's FNS on his own, sitting towards pit. The spike's on the way, but it's 12 seconds. Uh, okay, Rashi's completely unaware of so the possibility. And he's just gonna spam it. Oh, he's denied the plot! Oh my word, FNS! Spike down. And the yeah, time! Round done. He's done it! The singular frag comes in for FNS, and that's all it takes at times. Unbelievable. Holding on to the rifle as well at the end. Loud will be kicking themselves. These defensive protocols from Optic, uh, like I said, are forcing Loud to play this slow, play this passive, dig so deep to find any information, and they're unable to act upon it. Like I said, 30 seconds comes through. They're drifting slowly towards the site that still has three Optic players in it. And thank God, with the last couple of bullets, yeah. FNS finds out Warbang. This is really impressive from Optic on the defense here. I I'm wondering where the pace change comes from loud. So they need to step it up a little bit. There are opportunities, but they haven't learned enough from these rounds they've lost, they've lost so far to really act upon it. And now Optic are getting, they're getting funky with it. They're walking mid. There's two people out already. Uh-oh. Well, this timing is going to be interesting. There's no subtlety. These steps are <laughs> pretty loud. And we're going to see the check back towards Jay. Now, he hadn't been tested in a while, so maybe cooled off a little bit here, but the utility investors, he's got to be absolutely itching to pull the trigger. <laughs> there it is. The repeat. How? <laughs> How is, <laughs> How is Sadak alive? Tell me that. But he's still standing, still breathing. And well, that's Crash. Master Session. The spray is just gorgeous from Crashies. And now they're struggling to find impact, Mike. They really are. One struggling to find any success hell. at all. Crashies finds another Marv. Finds one as well. Pencala, the last man standing. And there's very few positives to take away from this half. If you're a loud fan. As if Optic going to find a flawless left. here in round 10. And you look at the money, there's not going to be a buy behind this. No. And, and I think this boils back down to what you were saying even in the previous round is that the Loud have been, tr I don't want to say close in a couple of rounds, but they haven't been able to get the information. They haven't been able to kind of work out the rotation times. Who to, who can they punish? What has left. been the tell on us so far? Because it does seem as though they are in the right place constantly at the right time. They just haven't had that breakthrough moment, it feels. Uh, they haven't even had a, a couple of rounds where they say, well, we identified where Crashies is playing in round, what, two or three? Yeah. L let's try and address that now. Let's see what's happening once we actually push through double doors, deal with this trap. Uh, they're kind of pushing, prodding, probing, and then it comes to the buy rounds, and there's no real plan formulated around any of this information. I hate to say it, it's feeling a little bit like that in attack in the second half. Yep. A little loss for answers. They achieve nothing on the back of this early default that I feel like they sit in for circa 60 seconds. I am with you. I, I, considering how deep Optic are playing, it's it's brutal for them. They're trying to pull the attention. And again, Optic can then flip the switch. We saw it in the previous round. They could start going aggressive middle. They are toying with the tempo, and it's really hard to read for loud. But now they sit a little bit deeper. And more standard to a degree, but it's still a triple stack towards Art. No one sat towards the other side by double doors. Look how far Ye is away from the rest of his team. Again. He's felt no pressure for like five rounds. The pop flash is good, but Victor keeps his cool here, Mike. And it's, it's gonna be light work for him. Yeah, he just absolutely unfazed by this. Now, he didn't note the players behind on the knife, but Victor is just the immovable object. They've got a weaker buy, don't get me wrong, but again, the information crashes laying on thick now. 
I, there's no escaping this. Actually, Pankata does get caught by that Seize as well. This will be noted. Find the first, the flash is good. Victor comes through, finds the fourth. Optic in their element Last right now. In the half. On the brink of a 9-3 half, you've got to feel even, yes, it's a buy coming in for Loud, but with the way the buy rounds have gone, you don't feel confident about Loud in it. No, because we've got to put it in context, excuse me. The rounds that are sitting with Loud, well, two of them were the pistol in the second. So again, that adds to the worry, that adds to the context of this, that it's not just, okay, well, let's say they lost the pistol and they ran through and they got a couple of close rifle rounds, that's different. It's the timeline as well. There's three rounds that are just decided by the clock. Yeah. And it's, that's it's, really concerning to see. Loud back on this B-long push early on. Nothing revealed on the knife here, but said, yeah, he's not felt any pressure. And previously, him and Marv have been able to hold this down. Okay, so... They eat a ton of damage there with the wallbang, though. Maybe working out that, yeah, he's been pretty much left alone these entire rounds. Um, maybe trying to get a couple of players to dedicate themselves towards be a little bit deeper, see if they can punish this deeper hold from crashies. But it, it, you're never alone, man. Optic, you, you can see it. Like Victor's right by his side. Instantly turn attention, ready to commit the utility towards long. The horn goes Great up, sees nothing. Well, by the way. Sees nothing. There's a flash so they can swing from the back. <laughs> Marv now noted. Beautiful. Mike, this is, this is really nice to watch. Confirmed on the back of it as well, and you see immediately Optic readjust. They're headed back towards a site. Crashies has total control of mid. Now, if you can find the backstab on Aspas, that will be huge. Here, poison's off. Man, FNS has been the safest pair of hands. Man. Still two snake bites. Time. Mob's gonna find Tadak. Thirty seconds left. Flashes depleted, gone from that. Victor, under a little bit of strain, but taking all the attention. FNS yet to be checked upon. FNS is just standing and standing and delivering two huge kills. There's the snake bite to buy more time, and it's disastrous for loud. Heartbreak for sure. 10 seconds and the clock's just dying to rot. Four more players to get past and they can try as they might. But they might just play the clock and they don't. They play the player nine to three. This has been a clinic from Optic. An absolute masterclass. And this wall, once again, it's almost conditioned of whether or not Optic are gonna take you know, control of A main or just have somebody tucked into that ratty spot. And finally in this half, FNS makes use of this pocket created right here. The wall drops, he's rewarded. Less and Aspas just left wide open for the taking. I just for me that information play they came up with there just a late, you know, check towards long. Oh, there's so much to break down. So let's hand it back over to the desk to quickly do that for you. Thank you very much, Pansy and Hypog. We didn't want Optic to have another slow start, and they've answered our prayers, Jess. <laughs> this is the Optic we know and love. You know what I felt after that half? I was like, this is what it's like to watch two teams just go fundamentally raw head-to-head. -head. None of this countering, none of this, because there's nothing to counter just yet. It's reads, it's reactions, being proactive and reactive. And at its core, and its most rawest level, Optic is just better at almost every single fundamental level. I know it's defensive side, but there is a singular man who stepped up in that half that we kind of begged to step up, Marved. He had an absolute half to himself. And I think that that is the kind of player that after two slow maps, Kilios, at least he just shrugged it off and just went, okay, new map, new me. I mean, kind of call it what it was. It was abysmal for Marv in the beginning, especially yeah. on that first map of Breeze. He, he was widely absent. He's somebody who is typically touted as one of the best, if not the best player on this roster alongside Ye because of what he offers to the team. But he has looked absolutely incredible for the squad right now. And for the side of Loud, it's just kind of been only Pancata this entire time. We haven't yeah. been seeing nearly as much impact from everybody else on this lineup. And one of the biggest things that stood up to me right now for Loud is just you're talking about fundamentals and whatnot. Yeah. The lack of them. Sure. There's so many times where they're going in for a plant. They're not clearing corners. They're not checking yeah. that cubby as soon as they enter into the A site. They're going for a plant with no time remaining. Not even checking to see if there's somebody sat in dugout. It's just weird to see that they're not clearing these positions and they are time and time again getting punished for it. I'm hoping coming into the second half that it's just loud having to put up with the defensive side of this that Optic is well known for. Maybe things change up here. We've seen a 9-3 already. I'm willing to see another. Yeah, it's not over just yet. I'm going to pitch this back to Pansy and Hypoc to see uh, which team is going to be making it out of this group. Oh, that is a tough question. Who is making it forward? I don't know. I don't want to call it yet, but but, but from what have. we've seen... I, all right. I was going to cut you off right there. Wow, my 
<laughs> Real nice. <laughs> You're not probably wrong. At 9-3, to three, it would be a disservice to the performance optic have put in to deny them this so far. Because it has been very clear-cut. Now, we have seen some one-sided halves, though, Mike. So I'm not going to call it just yet. Fair point. Yeah. Uh, it will be interesting to see optics approach now to the attack with how confident they've got to feel after the defensive half. And Poison initially, I say a Poison Orb invested here, and there's only one member of Loud actually holding oh. down the fort. Yeah, he's going to be rewarded for his patience elsewhere. Sadak was hunting outside art. But it, it, not necessarily a misread, but they could fall into a bit of a trap here to the it degree could, yeah. of the stack that is towards this A-side still. And the position that's coming from Aspas as well. Note that on the minimap now as they do win the fight on the way towards the site. That's actually has to slip away. But do they commit? They're so aware there's a flank potentially coming in. I like this from Optic. Hit the brakes for a second. Consider any of the other pushes coming in. And for Loud, that kind of just buys a couple more seconds for consideration here. Where Crashes has got to, though. He might even catch Sassy all nice. the way in spawn. And that's the green light. Well, Optic, <laughs> step it up a little bit and he'll find the plant here, Lauren. I really thought Aspas could have done more with that position, if I'm honest. I thought that could have been something to get maybe two, you know, hold a bit of the space to allow the others back in, but no. Let's put in a 1v4, and, and, and his post-plant, he's already being checked on in towards CT. Man, this ain't pretty. Yeah, this is a formality <laughs> now. That's beautiful from Optic, and the pistol was good. I mean, and, and it's... Yeah, I, I don't know what the options are really there for Loud, because I just feel we're not going to get to see them in a gun round. Well, the sad thing is we might not to see, get to see too long an attack in half from Optic, yeah. is what it feels like. Loud, whether or not they opt to invest here, I'm seeing a couple of SMGs flash up already, Lauren, which, uh, I don't know, which, yeah, whichever way you look at it. I don't see on the it. defense, it feels a little more comfortable to do so. Try and sit a little deeper and take close contact, but cool. it's a big risk, a big risk. It's a big scoreline against them. Maybe you got to do something, right? I mean, let's go. Let's find out. We go back in. 10 to 3, loud. They need some impact here. And look how close they're getting towards middle. Knife goes in. Did it note less? No, it didn't note. Okay, so he gets to keep his life. Desperate to play ahead of this poison orb, actually, from FNS and try and make Prowler. use of his one way. Okay, Prowler and the underhand flash goes in. Notes nothing close, but they've made a meal of it, really. They can't quite springboard off the back, but they have pulled two players over towards position. See the exact same pivot once again, it looks like, back towards Art. Or maybe still got their sights set yep. towards Link here. Second time's a charm. And they uh, and get a fight. Oh, and Sassy mid. good for it, but it's going to show there was that force by there. So that's quite telling already to have that sort of contact. Careful with the spike now on the other side. That spike drop. Great work from Sadak. Quickly going to commit the fragment towards it to buy a little bit of time to be able to turn attention elsewhere. I don't Carter. think Pancala was spotted there. I don't think so. Would I they, have this fight. they think about that? Where do they go in this? Yeah. Well, now definitely, right? Yep. Yep. That's the... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Man, does he abuse that there. switch time. Unreal. Okay, so Spike on the site. Less is super close by, though. Spike planted. They're still going to be paranoid about Pip. Did they get a chance? Yeah, oh, Ye was thinking about it, man. Yeah. Ye was thinking about it. Put his toes back in, but... Aspas going to come back through. He still has that spectre. But he's got FNS on the other side. An even fight, yeah. but one out by Aspas. So the 2v2, but how do you displace Ye? Let's see it. What's the go? Uh oh. oh. Um, That's not good. That's not good at all. Actually, Marv's now going to be sweating bullets here. The 1v1. He's got it. Big round in the end, and a big buy that came out for Loud that just gets shattered. Talked about him being back. The Iceman's back here. Finds three on the round, closes things out. Optic find their 11th. Loud actually presented with another opportunity to invest. That's gonna be left it's to it's odds now. and ends. Yep. Yeah. You just get left in that cycle here. And, and again, I, I, I'm i a little bit sad that we're not going to see potentially a longer side for uh, both yeah. of these teams. Because I'd love to have seen this. Because Optic look really well well equipped, well prepared on this. And I, I don't think we're going to get to see Loud in their element here at all. We go back in. Carter looking for maybe first contact here if he does hold that line. No, I'm going to dip away from this. Thinks better of it. And there it is. Shoulder peek to a confirm attendance. He's not going to try and set him up here. The stars now planted. Precious is. Thank God, I can't fall here. They're swinging that so early. Just taking the wide fight. Going to peel away from this now. They pulled the rotation, but they didn't have anyone working early. I guess rotation swords B or up middle, but. We'll see what they do There's with this now. No trap for double doors here, so that's going to keep Les in position. And look how deep Aspas has got. He's got his TP all the way back on elbow. 
how diligent or optic on the clearance here. Still two flashes for Victor, got his knife up. Obviously crashes has plenty of U2 and actually gonna be spotted here from the Prowler, potentially, no, it's invested elsewhere. But considering how they play this, I feel as though you have to then be diligent in your approach as well. So I think that's gonna be a high on the priority list, which it was, it has at least warded away Aspas to play deeper on the site now. He does Wait. have Sassy by his side. Did Marv hear the reposition from Les? That would be key information. I'm not sure. There's the high horn could reveal less he has. So they're going to note that, and, and Marv's actually found yeah. them two. Really nice combination work coming out from that fade utility, but Sadak going to fill the void, so it ain't over just yet. A 4v4 and the Bulldog still biting. Still a chance in this one, and make it three. Sadak, Sassy, and Aspas, where'd you go with this? And FNS's position is such a problem. Knife back up in two, but actually it's Aspas to find it. Do they have any idea about this position coming out from FNS though? He's waited so patiently, and it's going to pay dividends. Look at this man, spins around and sends him away. It's 12 for Optic now, sitting pretty on this board. They are looking like they're just sailing through this game. It's unfortunate they're unable to get anything done here early on. Optic just kind of riding the wave, honestly, that early momentum. The force comes through once again, allowed now with just scraping pennies together for what they can. They're even really going to be able to make a final stand. I don't think the ultimates are going to be there to support it either. Optic going to run away with this one. Rightfully so, deserved with how with how clinical that first that first half was. And, and considering how some of this game has gone, this has been a real test of the mental as well. Considering how close Fracture was, Breeze, the way that went down, they have been pushed and pushed and pushed. And I, I'm not going to call it before it happens. But the rivalry is just getting closer between these two, which I love as, as a storyline here, that they keep going closer and closer. But Loud going to... You say it's getting closer. I say it's getting more bitter now. Absolutely. There's a real deficit being built now if, if Optic are able to close this out. Yeah, I, I, again, it's just... It, it's ridiculous to think that the last time we saw this, it was, what, a group stage exit, was it? The elimination game, I believe, in Copenhagen? I'm pretty sure. So again... Bitterness, yes, but not quite as much on the line, but it does feel just so fated these two meet so often. But I, I think the way we just saw the first two maps go down, this rivalry is getting closer, but we have now seen that, that kind of ace up the sleeve for Optic, their creativity, their capability in new maps. They did it when it was in Fracture with that Neon coming out. We've seen this time and time again. They are so up for the challenge on these creative maps. But, and you've got to say it, big statement for the rest of the tournament to roll out Pearl this early and look That's absolutely it. hot to hot to trot here. Oh yeah, Optic, yeah, look as if we're barely scraping into the strat book here. Obviously, this is Who the knows? first couple of pages, yeah. like we said. Not going to see a very long second half it. here for them. So we might actually see a little bit of a pace change here. Mm. Aspas tries to find something. will be revealed as well though, but it's the green light. It's wide open here for the taking. Aspas actually tagged up with it. A big reveal on the other side of things, but Path comes out on top. He certainly does, and it's a player advantage, and Victor wants further. He's seen less. But in the meantime, Les did get crashy, so they're not going to have the easiest time. Underhand flash to the right and the catch on towards FNS2. This is getting really problematic, but still Victor doing damage. It's down to Sassi and Pancada. Can they keep control of this? Crossing towards the side, do they the catch story. a glimpse? No, Sassi doesn't see it. He can't really deny it. Temptation calling, but it's only a Guardian and a Spectre. It's so little to play with. No one's giving them anything here. I think both are real as well, yeah. They absolutely are. This is tricky work, and FNS wants this over. He wants this done. Sassy's still standing, but this has been systematic destruction from Optic. Sassy's got to face the music, exchanging places with FNS, and Ye just playing the clock. He's making him work for this meal. Sassy tries again. <laughs> He's just toying with him, man. You can't do this to them. Optic make it to 13.